Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's me Ivan, your host. Welcome back. For today's episode, we're going to discuss Earth's nature, how philosophers and scientists have solved riddles about it, what are the modern facts about the Earth, and most especially, what we can do in order to keep it a haven for life. So please, sit comfortably and let's begin. For thousands of years, philosophers and scientists answered, tried to answer these three questions. What is the size of the Earth? What is the shape of the Earth? And where is it located in the universe? Well, let's start with Earth's shape. One of the various models of Earth's shape that started was the Flat Earth Model. The Flat Earth Model says that the Earth is flat and it has the entire sky revolving around it. Well, the flat earth model was not the only model about the earth during those times. There was the cylindrical earth model, or even there was the kind of cuboid earth model. But all of them were disproved by Aristotle and many other Greek philosophers. They used an example of a boat. So, if you were at a port and you're seeing a ship or a boat getting farther away from you and heading towards the horizon, this is what will happen. You will notice as the boat gets farther away from you, the bottom of the boat is slowly disappearing. So now, do you understand how Aristotle and many other Greek philosophers discovered that the Earth is round? Well, that is not the only evidence today that the Earth is round. Many other forms of evidence, such as the shadow that the Earth exerts on the Moon during the lunar eclipse, and even the photos and videos that were taken from space, are a good proof that the Earth is indeed round and spherical. So, after the shape of the Earth was deciphered, it was time to discover what is its size. The size of the Earth, well, it was measured by Eratosthenes. Through a series of measurements and observations, he discovered that the Earth has a circumference of at least 40,000 kilometers. This measurement was incredibly accurate, and today it, was, it is one big and important measurement that geographers and geologists, people who study the Earth, mainly use today. Now, after the size of the Earth was deciphered, it was time to discover where is it in the universe. So, the two main theories on where the Earth is are the geocentric model and the heliocentric model. The geocentric model, or the Earth-centered model, suggests that the Earth is at the center of the universe and that the planets, moon, sun, and the stars orbit around it, or at least revolve around it, while the heliocentric model proposes that the sun is at the center of the universe and that the Earth moon, planets, and all the other stars orbit around it, or at least revolve around it. These two theories were debated for a long time, and during those times, at least be the times before Jesus Christ, geocentrism won the day. So, for more than 2,000 years, the geocentric model was believed to be correct. So, by the way, let me tell you who founded those two main models. The geocentric model was first proposed by Aristotle and developed by Ptolemy Claudius, while the heliocentric model was first proposed by Aristarchus of Samos, another Greek philosopher, and then was later explained a bit better by Copernicus, Galileo, and even Johannes Kepler and Tycho Brahe. So, now, after those 2,000 years of people believing that the Earth is at the center of the universe, things are about to change. Nicolaus Copernicus, a Polish mathematician, published a book called On the Revolutions of the Celestial Spheres, keeping to claim that Aristarchus's model aka heliocentric model is right and that the geocentric model is wrong. 
Claudius Ptolemy, on his side as well, as well proposed that indeed Aristotle was right and that the Earth is indeed the center of the universe and that the heliocentric model by Aristarchus of Samos was wrong. So, again, geocentric model won the day. By the way, note that this geocentric model was embraced by the major religions of the time, including the Roman Catholic Church. So, that was not until Galileo Galilei, an Italian astronomer, he discovered through a series of measurements and observations that the Earth is indeed orbiting the Sun and that the heliocentric model is right. So, he continued to speak about it. He taught it in the university since he was a professor of mathematics and astronomy. He kept, kept, and kept saying that the Earth is indeed orbiting the Sun. He had observational proof on like Copernicus and Aristarchus of Samos, which made him a louder voice to express theocentrism. But since, as I told you, the Roman Catholic Church embraced the geocentric model, the Roman Catholic Church refused to listen to Galileo and instead forced him to stop teaching about heliocentrism. And if he wouldn't stop, he would be burnt to the stake like Giordano Bruno, an other philosopher who had been burnt to the stake due to believe the same thing. So, for his own security, Galileo accepted and he was imprisoned in his own home. But the works of Galileo did not, remained spoken. People continued to speak about the works of Galileo and in the end, the heliocentric model won the day. After that, Johannes Kepler and Isaac Newton and even Tycho Brahe contributed to find the modern ways of how gravity and even the orbit work. Johannes Kepler, on his side, discovered that the planets move in elliptical orbits together with his mentor, Tycho Brahe. And Isaac Newton discovered gravity and orbit and how they work. Now, enough talking about the history, and let's talk about the modern facts. The Earth is the third closest planet to the Sun, and it is 150 million kilometers away. Not only that, it is the fifth largest planet in the solar system, and it is the largest planet in the rocky planet category. So now, it is, has a diameter of 13,000 kilometers across not the radius of 40,000 kilometers across. So, before I move on, you have to note that the distance between the Sun and the Earth has a special name, the astronomical unit. Notice that I use the term the astronomical unit because this particular unit is very important to astronomers and helps us measure the complex distances of astronomical objects. So, now, let's see the particularities about the Earth. What makes the Earth so unique from all the other planets? Well, here are some. Number one, as many of you know, the Earth is the only planet in the solar system to support life, or at least abundant life. Number two, 71% of its entire surface is covered with water and 29% is covered with land. Note also that this percentage of water on, on the surface is rapidly increasing due to global warming and climate change. So, the particularities here is also that the Earth is the densest planet in the solar system. Well, at first thought, you might think that Jupiter is the densest planet, but the Earth is the most dense. You see, Jupiter may be the most massive, but not the most dense. Why is the Earth the densest planet in the solar system? Please write in the comment section down below and you will find the answer in the next episode. Speaking of the answer, the answer on the last episode was coronal, the coronal heating or that particular paradox. We astronomers believe that the reason why the corona is hotter than the surface is nanoflares. Nanoflares are like solar flares but at much smaller scales probably adding to the temperature of the corona every day. Now you have your answer? Good. 
So remember to answer why is the Earth the densest planet in the solar system in the comment section. Anyway, going on to the particularities, let's ask ourselves this question. What makes the Earth support life in such abundance? Well, there are three things. The atmosphere, the magnetic field, and the habitable zone. You see, the Earth has a life gas has life-giving gases in the atmosphere that help us to breathe. Those gases also protect us from solar radiation, such as the ozone, O3, oxygen. Then the atmosphere in turn also protects the oceans from boiling away. But also the atmosphere itself is protected by the magnetic field of the Earth. So, now do you understand? And so, for the Earth not to boil or to freeze, it has to be in the habitable zone, or also called the Goldilocks zone, based on the story Goldilocks and the Three Bears. The sun is very hot, so we should not be too near in order to boil, or too far in order to freeze. We are just in the right distance, called the habitable zone. And as we'll see in future episodes, we're in more than 10 habitable zones at the cosmic scale, so we'll have to check the next videos to find that out. So, let's get into the layers of the Earth. The Earth, like the Sun, has the, a core, but the Earth, just like Venus, has a mantle and a crust. So the crust is the surface in which you stand on, the mantle contains kind of molten magma that spew volcanoes out and also responsible for the continental plates which move. And finally the core which also generates the magnetic field. The earth is tilted by a 23.5 degree and it precesses. It means that the axis does not always point to the, towards the north star. It doesn't always point to the north star. 26,000 years ago, it pointed toward the star Theuban, but now it points towards Polaris. 26,000 like, 26, years later, it will point towards Vega. So now, the particular concept of precession is the reasons why horoscopes are wrong. So finally, let's talk about conservation. The Earth is under great threat due to pollution, climate change, and global warming. That's why everyone should try to preserve it. Avoid using, throwing plastic bags on the... Bush burning, disposing waste in water bodies, and so on. ...in this pollution. So, I hope you liked this video. Please click the like button, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thank you. See you on the next episode.